Welcome. It's nice to have you here. Today, I'm going to share with you a very important lesson about some of the little known causes of failure to manifest your desires. Uh, so this will be very helpful because the first thing to understand is that all of our lives are desire. This is something that many people don't understand or they have an incomplete understanding of. And so this holds them back from actually uh, fulfilling their purpose. As a result, they're obviously unfulfilled. And that unfulfillment means that there's still desire. That means that there's continued craving for experience which means that the cycle goes round and round. So it turns out that fulfilling your true desires is a spiritually correct thing to do because it is uh, necessary for um, liberation. I'm pointing this out at the beginning because I want it to be clear that the larger context of what I'm sharing is really about we could call spiritual liberation, self-realization. Because that's the ultimate fulfillment. And um, in order to uh, succeed in achieving that, it's necessary to actually satisfy all your true desires. That does not mean it's necessary to satisfy all desire because uh, most desire is not actually authentically yours. <laughs> so the first uh, step in the whole process is to get clear on what your desires are because those are the desires that have given rise to this life. Um, so just say a few more things about that briefly, and then we'll get into the things that hold people back from actually fulfilling their desires, because that's the heart of what I want to talk about today. But again, at the beginning, I just want to clarify why it's important to satisfy your desires, because otherwise what happens is sometimes people will hide behind a partial knowledge. There's a you know, some people have had have received some knowledge from some teachings that suggests that desire is problematic, that desire is the obstacle to liberation. Maybe people have had authentic personal insights that have revealed how that is true, but it's a half truth because um, it's really the attachment to uh, false desires that's the big problem and then it's the failure to satisfy the true desires because again this lifetime is nothing other than desire think about it for a moment it will become actually abundantly clear that there would be no life if there was not desire i mean desire is the is the essence of all life so we could say Fundamentally, it's a desire to know oneself. So that essential desire to know oneself gives rise to all other desire. And if we don't tell the truth about that, then we continue to deceive ourselves, which means then we have failed to satisfy our desire, which means we don't actually know who we are, which means that we continue to live in fear which means that it just goes round and round, which is the ultimate dissatisfaction. And that's basically the definition of suffering. So anybody who wants freedom from suffering, anybody who wants authentic happiness, anybody who wants spiritual liberation, it's really helpful, I would say important, maybe even essential to understand this first point, which is that the fulfillment of desire is not the enemy. It is not a problem. It is essential. 
because at the heart of it, there is a, a, this one fundamental desire, which is to know oneself. And I don't think um, many people would take issue with that you know, because, you know, even the most uh, staunchly uh, devout non-dualists, I think, would have to admit that there is a desire to know oneself. Uh, some people are so intellectually wrapped up, they can't even admit that, I suppose. But most people will be able to see that that is true. So there you have it, that there is at the very least one fundamental desire to know oneself, and that has to be satisfied. Otherwise, there's ongoing suffering, confusion, ignorance. So that's the context. That's why satisfying desire is not the enemy. It's essential. But then, as I say, we do want to have some clarity about what is our authentic desire versus what is not. And um, as I've said, the most fundamental desire is shared by all because it's a desire to know oneself. That's at the heart of everything else. Everything else uh, is derivative from that. So all other desire is rooted in that, and it's at some distance to that. So some desire is closer to that, and some desire is further from that. So we want to get clear on the most essential desires and some people will say, well, why not just go directly for this desire to know yourself? Um, and that seems logical, but and it, it could work if you're willing to do it. But the truth is, most people aren't willing to do it. This is about recognizing your path in life. So we could say that there, we could break it down into two categories of paths in life, two essential spiritual paths. One would be the path of the renunciate and one would be the path of the householder, right? So there are those who are in the world and there are those who are only wanting to live in a cave in the Himalayas and um, see through all the illusion. Well, some people have a particular attachment to the idea of being a, a renunciate, but if they tell the truth, they are not one. For example, anybody who is participating in this meeting in any form or fashion is definitely not a renunciate because guess what? You have internet access. So you're very much uh, involved in the material world. So it's very important to tell the truth. And I'm, I laugh about this and roll my eyes only at myself because these are the mistakes that I've made. Um, and I see other people making these mistakes, so I'm clarifying them to save people a lot of unnecessary uh, struggle and difficulty, because if you can really just tell the truth from the get-go and say, oh, guess what? I'm living in the world. I have uh, material attachments, and that's not likely to change anytime really soon. But then you will uh, put yourself on the right path, which is your path, and it's not an inferior path. It's just your path. So neither path is better or worse. It's just about knowing which path is your path. And since you are watching or participating in this, your path is not the path of the renunciate. That means that you have worldly desires that you must satisfy. That's why your path is your path, because you have some desires that you need to satisfy that have to do with being in this world. That's not inferior, it's just the truth. <laughs> and like I said, I laugh because these are the mistakes that I have made and I know the pain of it because it really postpones things. Uh, because you cannot, you, you cannot arrive at the truth until you're willing to tell the truth, right? If you don't, if you're not willing to acknowledge your own path, and be on your own path, then you're just in ignorance, which means you cannot succeed until you're willing to tell the truth about it. So hopefully everybody is on board with this at this point, just to acknowledge that you have some unfulfilled worldly desires. And while it's an interesting idea to say, well, I'm just going to focus exclusively on uh, knowing myself as, uh, 
as uh, as oneness, knowing myself as pure consciousness. In practice, that's only part of it. It's very important, but it's only part of it. And if you don't also address the other part of it, then you will continue to have, guess what, unfulfilled desires, which means that you'll continue to go round and round and round until you finally tell the truth about it and then address them. Hopefully I've made that clear. I won't belabor the point, I hope, any further. So now, um, that's why I'm suggesting that having a um, having the proper knowledge about how to satisfy your authentic desires is really important because without it, you'll just keep going round in suffering. And it gets to a point, you know, of course, some there are different forms of suffering. Some forms of suffering are more painful than others. But after a while, even the lightest form of suffering is unbearable. You know, it's all relative. If you are immersed in deep, deep, deep suffering, uh, the most painful kind of suffering, the most um, profound ignorance, then uh, it's all up from there, which is good news, right? But then it, let's say you get to this point where you're... Um, awareness is quite refined and you have a lot of insight and you've let go of a lot of things and your life is relatively quite light and free and happy. But guess what? Those few small unfulfilled desires hurt so badly that it's basically the same as that deep, deep suffering. So all desire ultimately needs to be resolved. Now, not all desire needs to be resolved by being manifest. This is where we can uh, benefit greatly from getting clarity about what is our true desire. In other words, the desire which has given rise to this lifetime versus the desire that's not ours. So all desire has to be resolved, but some desire can be resolved quite easily simply by recognizing it's not yours. So you can think about that as low-hanging fruit. Don't waste your time fulfilling desires that are not actually yours in any other way other than just to recognize that they're not yours. Because otherwise, let's say, for example, that you have you you have a desire for uh, uh, some kind of really fancy car very expensive car. Now, I know nobody present here would actually have such a desire. I, I smile because surely somebody does. Maybe not if maybe not present live, but on YouTube, somebody's going to watch it and they're going to say, yeah, I, I have that desire. Okay, great. Um, now, the truth is, it's fairly unlikely it's not impossible, but it's fairly unlikely that that's uh, actually your authentic desire. Maybe there's a few people out there, but most people who have that desire, it's not really your desire. Uh, it's a borrowed desire. It's some desire that you have taken on because of a lack of uh, um, dis discrimination, right? Like you have to be able to discern which what, what desires are really yours so there are so many desires that are floating around out there and if we tell the truth about it society is very happy to sell us desires <laughs> right i mean everywhere you look there are desires that are being sold to you um but do they actually help you do they benefit you and if you tell the truth about it the majority of them don't right you don't most people are not actually going to benefit at a soul level at a, a real authentic level because they get the fancy car or the big screen tv or the new iphone or whatever things they think they want and it's not just those material things there are many things that people think they want right you know if they think they want to have certain kinds of success in life they want to have uh certain kinds of acknowledgement or whatever and for some people, that's true, but for most people, it's not true. They just borrowed it. It was it was given to them. So having that discrimination about what's yours and what's not yours is very important because right away, you, then you can dismiss 
an enormous number of desires that will save you a lot of time when you can just see and recognize that's not mine. So when you know it's not yours, then you feel a relief. So I'm not talking about denial. It's not about saying, oh, well, that's not a good desire, so I'm going to deny it. Like, well, I shouldn't want that fancy car, so I'm going to deny it. I'm going to, I should only want to be uh, altruistic. You know, I should only want to run some kind of charity that helps the homeless or something. Uh, but what, you know, should and shouldn't is really irrelevant. It's about what is. So you have to tell the truth. Well, sometimes people want to know how to do that. Um, that's a whole thing in and of itself that I can tell you, I can give you some suggestions, but you really have to do the work for yourself. So it's not like none of this is ever so easy as I can just give you the answer. Well, sometimes I could give you the answer, but you have to you have to actually know the answer for yourself. So you have to do the work. Um, but, you know, I suggested this before, I think. I mean, I've su certainly suggested it some in, in some meetings somewhere, if not this Monday meeting, that you write down what you want, right? So just don't censor yourself, write it all down, including the, the fancy cars and the, you know, all the things that you think you want. And then go through your list and just tell the truth about it, right? Just at a heart level, just check in with your heart and tell the truth. Do I really want it? Is it really important to me? Um, maybe there are multiple tests for this. One test might be, if this was your last moment in this lifetime, does this really matter? You know, did it really matter to you in the, the last moment of the life, whether you got the car or not? If, if it did, then great. It, that tells you that this is a, truly your desire, probably. In which case, keep it, because you have to fulfill it. But if not, then see that it's not actually yours and then just let it go. Again, it's not about denying. It's not about rejecting. It's not about suppressing. It's just about seeing that it's not yours and letting it go. It will feel like a huge relief. So you can go through that process and you'll get it down to a few things. Now, another way that you can do this, and this is, I think, easier. Maybe I should have started with this. Is... Um, just figure out what hurts you the most, okay? Because the truth is what you want is the opposite of what's hurting you the most. So, you know, we all have our special makeup, our special, uh, you know, the special makeup of desires that's given rise to this lifetime. So it's not going to be the same for any two people it's kind of like the same mix of ingredients, but to varying degrees. So it's always unique, but you can just see, okay, what hurts me the most in my life? And you, you should be able to know that, right? I mean, if, if you're truthful. And so some, for some people, what's really hurting the most is they just, they just don't seem to have enough. Well, I mean, the funny thing is everybody actually has enough. It's not funny at all, <laughs> but I mean, I say it's funny that everybody has enough. I mean, except for those who don't, but those who don't, they're not here, right? Because they didn't have enough. But you, if you tell the truth about it, you do have enough. You've always had enough because you're still here. But what we're really struggling with is in our minds, we, we're imagining we might not have enough. We're afraid of not having enough. And so if that's what's hurting you, which it's hurting a lot of us to varying degrees, right? So if we just tell the truth about it, we say, okay, I'm afraid that I don't have enough. I'm I'm stressed a lot about not having enough. I'm I'm constantly worrying in the back of my mind, if not in the foreground, um, where how I'm going to pay the bills, how I'm going to have enough for for next month, next year, next week, tomorrow, right? If if that's a stress for you, if it's an ongoing stress, then um, maybe <laughs> maybe that's part of your agenda in this life. You see, like maybe your life. Uh, has come to be because of a desire to know something. And in this case, it's to know the opposite of lack, which would be what? Abundance. Okay, so you see how this works? Figure out what's hurting you and then figure out what's the opposite of that because that, that, there, that it's almost foolproof. That is the makeup of your life. So if you are somebody who struggles with feeling uh, unloved, you know, you're just like, I just so desire to be loved, but I don't feel loved. I feel like I'm not enough and 
nobody could ever really actually love me, especially if they really knew about me. And uh, nothing ever really seems to work out for me. You know, I've tried and tried, but it's just never worked out. Well, if that's really hurting you, then guess what? Very likely part of your agenda in this life is to learn about, fulfill the desire to know deeply the truth of love. So hopefully you're seeing how that works, right? So um, pretty powerful process. Figure out what hurts you the most. Really have to tell the truth about that because sometimes we, we're in denial, right? We say, oh, well, I, we've spiritualized things. Oh, I shouldn't because of this, that, and the other. We've, we've acquired a bunch of knowledge, but we haven't really integrated it. So we have to just be really honest with ourselves and sincere and say, okay, this is where I'm hurting. I'm going to be willing to be vulnerable, at least to myself, and tell the truth about how I'm hurting, where I'm hurting, and then I'm going to figure out what's the opposite of those things. That So that's what you want, is the opposite of what you're struggling with the most. So I would encourage you to write these things down, because if you write it down, it's not essential, but it sure does help, because if you write it down, then you're actualizing it, you're taking steps, so you know whether you're doing it or not. Uh, otherwise, you can kind of fool yourself. You can say, oh, I'm doing the work because I showed up for the meeting. But showing up for the meeting, as important as it is, isn't enough because you have to be willing to do the work yourself. So writing it down is a good way to know whether you're doing the work. I mean, it's not foolproof because you can write stuff down and not really like do the the deep work. But if you're at least willing to write it down, you've got some evidence that you've done something, which is helpful. So now when you've done gone through that process, you know what you want. And um, okay, so now that you know what you want, and hopefully I've made it clear why it's important that you must fulfill those things. And if those are the things that are hurting you and you're living in this world, which you are, then pretty good chance that you need to actualize or manifest something in this world, in your experience, that will uh, be evidence to you of having learned that lesson, having satisfied that desire. Because you really, like you took this lifetime, not willy-nilly, nothing happens by chance. It's all, it's all, everything has a cause. And so there's no coincidence or mere coincidence that your lifetime has taken this particular shape with these particular hurts and these particular desires because you have a desire to know, learn, and manifest through and through that lesson of whatever it is that you want, right? So if you want love, then at the deepest level, it's a, it's a, it's the love of the divine, right? It's divine love. It's unconditional love. It's knowing oneness. It's knowing the truth of yourself because everything resolves at that. But your particular life has taken shape because you want to see and know and feel and experience that at all levels. Otherwise, you wouldn't have taken this life at all. So then great, then you just tell the truth about that, what you want in a manifest sense and write it down as though it's already true. And then you say, in my imagination, right? So in my imagination, I experience the joy, happiness, and content of a loving relationship that's fulfilling, meaningful, and purposeful to me. Uh, something along those lines. I mean, you use your own words, but there you go, something along those lines. So you write that down and then you read it every day and imagine that it is so because in your imagination, you get to do that. And the, the truth is that this is all consciousness. There's one consciousness. One consciousness is dreaming all of this because of a desire. The desire is the dream. The dream is the desire. And so you have a spiritual mandate to uh, recognize and exercise your powers to fulfill the desire. So you write down what you want as though it's already true in my imagination, right? Because in your imagination, you get to do whatever you want. Then just imagine every day that fulfillment, okay? And so in my imagination, I experience uh, 
vibrant good health that allows me to do all the things that I want to do, feeling great. And then you imagine exactly that, right? Because, and in your imagination, you get to do whatever you want. So the, the conditions and circumstances are totally up to you, whatever that might mean. Okay, so the, the conditions of the external world are just the result of, it's just a projection of old beliefs. So you can, in your imagination presently, you can create whatever you want, and that's what you must do. So do so. Um, I've given the example of, you know, health, and I've given the example of a uh, of loving relationship. You can do that with anything, anything at all. And it, it could be, uh, it could seem very profound and spiritual and everything, or it could be, you know, you want the Lamborghini, whatever. If it's true it's for you, then go for it. Um, but that's the basic process. So moving pretty quickly through all this stuff, because it's, I've already covered a lot of this a lot, bit, and I want to have some time for um, the things that are holding most people back. But I just want to give the setup at the beginning so we're all on the same page, so everybody kind of understands. So, so just brief review, okay? There's a... The law of oneness, there's only one truth, one reality, one consciousness. Call it what you will. It's the only truth and the only reality. You are that. That does not mean your body uh, is the exclusive container of that. It does not mean your personality is the exclusive container of that. It means that that which is formless, infinite, boundless, eternal, omnipresent, is the truth and you are that not your body again it's not i'm not saying you as your body or your personality are the exclusive container of that i'm saying that that is the supreme reality which is formless and you are that formless supreme reality and you're dreaming and all of this is a dream So hopefully you can see that that's true. I've gone over this many times, so I won't belabor the point, but it is very helpful, enormously valuable in this whole process if you can see that, if you can see that when you, so everybody presumably can recognize that they have the experience of dreaming when they lie down in their bed, right? So you lie down in your bed, you close your eyes, you fall asleep, you start to dream, in that dream, there's a dream universe, a dream reality, dream people, dream places, dream animals, dream vehicles, dream trees, dream whatever, dream everything. So that whole dream experience, dream reality is taking place. And while it's happening, happening, you're hypnotized most of the time. And so you are believing that you are some small part of that taking place within that larger context you're believing due to the hypnosis that there's an objective reality um, outside of you that you are interacting with now when you wake up what happens well the whole thing vanishes back into the same formless consciousness that it emerged from so what was it all along it was always formless consciousness now, just take a look and see that the same is true now of the waking state. The waking state is really fundamentally not different than the dream state. So dream state, waking state, deep sleep state, they all are the, the, the three fundamental states that all exist. They come and go in consciousness as consciousness. So that's all of them are only consciousness. So again, I, I'm telling you that if you can see the truth of that in your own direct experience it's enormously valuable because it's um highly empowering so a lot of people are trying to solve their life problems using the law of attraction and uh, it can work but the problem is that the law of attraction is a somewhat it's a derivative law it's lower level and it for the most part, I mean, it doesn't have to be this way, but for the most part, it's interpreted and understood at a lower uh, level of consciousness, which is a level of consciousness that is 
objective perceiving separation. So then, you know, people are understanding that the vibrations that I hold within are going to attract attract to me those things that are outside that are in that are resonating in like um, vibration. Well, it's true, but it's true at that level, and that level, you have less power there. It's just the nature of it because things are um, it, power. The power is stepped down at each level of consciousness. So if you uh, want greater power to solve your problems, to you know resolve your desires, it's, you'll have more efficacy at a higher level. And so that's why I encourage it, because if you can just see the truth of this, that you are consciousness dreaming, then you really take back your power and it will help you tremendously. It'll just be more efficient. Okay. I think everything that I'm telling you other will work anyway. Uh, I don't see anything that won't work anyway. You know, even if you're perceiving yourself as a separate individual in an objective universe, it will still, the things I'm telling you will work, but they won't be as efficient. You'll have much greater efficacy if you can recognize that you are consciousness dreaming. Because the point is, then you really can see that just like a dream, this waking state is just all in consciousness and you are that. So what you perceive due to the hypnotic power of Maya as being something objective and separate from you is really just consciousness, which you are. And so you can start to see, perceive and experience the truth, which is that the substance of all things is consciousness, which means that you don't have to exert as much effort and energy trying to move things about out there, arranging the circumstances and objective conditions, because uh, it's actually much easier than that. So again, I'm just kind of running through this stuff. This is all just preliminary stuff that mm -hmm. I've covered elsewhere. So most of all of you have some familiarity with this. Uh, the... Um, Okay, so this is all consciousness. It's one consciousness dreaming, dreaming is dreaming an, a, an apparent objective reality populated by all kinds of apparently separate things. But actually the substance of all these things is none other than consciousness. And so w w we can further refine our understanding then and see, okay, that's interesting. It's all consciousness, but more specifically how is that working because if we have a more detailed view of it then maybe we can work with it more intelligently which i, I would suggest we can so again just very briefly um so everything is it's, uh, all of this is consciousness and it's vibrating and that vibration uh allows for there to be a sense of contrast okay so Without the vibration, then it's just hom homogenous. So you can't perceive anything distinct. It would be like if there was a homogenous mist, you wouldn't be able to see anything. It's like, um, I've never done such a thing, but I, uh, I know that there are these uh, sensory deprivation tanks, right? And when people enter into these, then they start to have hallucinations because um, it's starts to produce a kind of homogenous, uh, more homogenous uh, sensory experience because a lot of the stuff, the stimulation, the contrast is being removed. So a lot of that contrast that we're acclimated to, it provides the, um, the sense of familiarity that allows us to, it's kind of the familiar background against which we we project the uh more or less familiar foreground. But when that is reduced, then all of a sudden it starts to get kind of hazy. And so we start to project all kinds of stuff that's not as familiar to us or not as uh, normal for us. So you know, the more homogenous it is, then the more um, the potential is there. I mean, the potential is always there, but the more that we're closer to the hom homogenous state we are, the, the more we realize that potential. So it's like anything could pop out. It sort of becomes very uh, 
it's much less predictable. Okay. So, um, but everything is, is now imagine that the more that it's vibrating, the more contrast there is. And so it starts to, forms start to appear. So it's like you're looking at clouds, which are mist, I guess we could say. And as there's enough contrast there, we start to say, oh, it looks like a puppy dog. Oh, it looks like a sports car. You know, oh, it looks like a castle. Um, because there's enough contrast to produce that kind of uh, experience. Okay, so that's the that's basically what's happening is this vibration, and then the very the the depending on the type of vibration, right? So the vibration can vary by frequency, by amplitude. Then um, we tend to perceive different things just by association. Now, what follows from this is that as things start to appear as things, right? So we start to say, oh, well, suddenly it's like, you know, in, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the yada, yada, yada. And then God created, divided the, the what, the night from the day, the earth from the water, something, right? But there's a division that starts to take place. Um, this contrast begins to become more, uh, more, it's augmented. And so what we have is a, a singularity. Okay? It's all consciousness, but it starts to appear as a duality. So we start to perceive all of these dualities, which we could call polarities. And so they always exist. All polarities are always existing in uh, connection with one another. So you could never have up without down because it's always relative. Up is only relative to down. Down is only relative to up without down up is meaningless there is no such thing uh you know left and right forward and backward night and day good and bad so everything is like that everything exists as a polarity so everything has its polar opposite and it cannot exist without it because its existence is relative to its opposite Now, what this, the significance of this is that with any polarity, the way that the polarity uh, is able to continue to maintain itself is due to this, this hypnotic power. And this hypnotic power depends upon this. Uh, we'll call it focus, okay? So focus, you can only focus on one thing at a time. So think about a magic show, okay? The magic show depends upon your focus. Magician relies upon sleight of hand, right? Redirecting your attention away from what he or she is doing so that you... Uh, don't have that awareness of what has actually happened. And when your attention comes back, then something has happened that causes you to perceive that something unexpected and magical has happened. So uh, your attention can only be on one thing at a time. You can only focus on one thing at a time, which means with any polarity, you can only focus on one thing at a time one of the of the polar opposites, meaning you can only focus on good or bad, not both. You can only focus on up or down, not both. If you try to focus on both at the same time, what happens is the polarity collapses. So because manifestation is dependent upon that polarization, that vibration. So if you try to focus on both at the same time, what happens is that hypnotic power disappears because that vibration is the hypnotic power. So if you uh, try to focus on both, then what's realized is that there is no actual separation there. There's, there never was. There's no actual meaningful distinction to be made. There, it's just all of an illusion. So the entire polarity collapses, at least temporarily, right? So if you tried to focus on both up and down, then it becomes meaningless. 
so then there is no up or down. Uh, and so this would be the case with everything. So some people take advantage of that if, and it, it, it can be useful to make, uh, to take advantage of that because if you wanted to collapse any polarity in your life, you could do that. But here the focus is on fulfilling your desire, which means that you actually want to focus on one of the polarities and versus the other. So the point here is you have to make a choice. So I mean, there's a lot of information, but I'm just going to try to put it all together now. So you can only focus on one thing at a time and everything exists in opposition to what it is not. So notice if we kind of go back to what I was suggesting earlier as a basic process for fulfilling your desire is you start with what you are hurting, how you're hurting, then you find out what's the opposite of that. So here we have a polarity, right? So if you're uh, suffering because you perceive that you're unlovable, uh, then what you want is love. If you're uh, suffering because of uh, fear, then you want, let's call it safety. You could call it other names, it doesn't matter, but I'm just gonna use that word. Okay, so you just see that what you want is the opposite of what you're struggling with. So, necessarily because you're struggling with what you don't want your habit has been to put your attention on what you don't want right that should be fairly obvious but it's pretty important to recognize if you're struggling with uh fear then your attention goes to fear a lot and your attention does not go to safety very much <laughs> Because if you're if it was flipped the other way around, if your attention mostly went to safety and not to fear, then you would not be struggling with fear. Because wherever your attention goes, that's where the energy goes. So you would have more a dominant experience of safety if that's where your attention went most of the time. So you want, hopefully this is fairly obvious, you want to put your attention on what you want now, the problem is that you, out of habit, keep putting your attention on what you don't want. So uh, you put your attention on the fear, the lack, the unworthiness, unlovability, um, all these things out of habit. And you say you want this other thing, but you don't put your attention on it sufficiently. So you're only getting one of, you can only get one end of the polarity in your manifest experience. You can't get both because if you get focused on both, it collapses. So you know that if you're, fo if you're experiencing fear, it's because you're focused on fear and you're not focused on safety. So now, this is a big part. So why do people not have success in manifesting what they want? Well, obviously, first thing is they don't know what they want. So I've already tried to clear that up. You have to get clear about what you want. That's step number one. Uh, well, I guess step 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 zero would be you have to be clear that um, manifesting what you truly want is essential. Because if you won't, if you're not on board with that, then you'll stay stuck and not actually take any steps. Okay, but then step one is you have to know what you want. Uh, and then step two is you have to consistently put your attention on that and in your imagination. Don't worry about what's happening externally because what's happening externally is just the result of your old habit. But you want to form the new habit, which means you have to keep your attention internal on what you want in your imagination. Okay, so these are the fundamental steps accept that it's good to fulfill your true desire step next step is get clear on what your true desire is next step is keep your attention on that so most people fail because they don't do those things i mean that's just the truth and hopefully everybody here can see that that's already recognizes the truth of that um, but it is worth pointing out, which I've had just done, because even though you might know that, it's very useful to be reminded of that because 
in a sense, it's that simple. If you just do that, you will succeed. But most people don't do that. They give up. They give up. Um, and they give up because the old habit is uh, dominant and they don't yet have confidence that they can or should uh, choose anew in alignment with what they actually want. But let's say that you are somebody who has done those things, you're doing those things and you're consistently doing those things. You know, every day you put attention on what you want, you get clarity about, you know, this, this is really what I want. And you know and trust that this is good, that I should, I have a, you know, a, a spiritual mandate to fulfill this desire. It's a good thing for me to do. You know, this is not in any way problematic, harmful, or bad. This is just an entirely good thing. It's good for me to know love. It's good for me to manifest love. It's good for me to have a, a total uh, knowledge and experience of love. If you accept that and you put your attention on that, assuming that love is the thing that you want to manifest. Um, so you're, let's say you're doing that every day. Every day you've written down your statement. You read it three times a day. You, in, your, my, in my imagination, I'm, I enjoy um, deep love, loving relationships and self-love in all ways. I feel wonderful. I feel supported. I feel nourished. Okay. And so you imagine that. And then you um, you uh, try to feel the truth of that in your imagination. So you get to create whatever the circumstances are, the conditions are in your imagination, right? So you could imagine that you have the loving relationships that offer you that, or you could imagine that you are, uh, you know, embraced by uh, the divine in whatever form you uh, relate best to, or you can imagine that you're in, um, you know, a beautiful natural environment and just feeling totally connected and, and loved and nourished there, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what's true for you. You imagine that so that you can feel and experience it because when you feel and experience it, you're forming that new, uh, evidence for yourself, which will make that true, true on, on, on all levels. So as long as you persist in that, you will succeed eventually. Now, as I've talked about, there's interference, the interference, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail today about it, but you can certainly help yourself out and accelerate the progress if you get clear on what the interference is and you remove it. So, um, well, I'm, I am going to go into some detail on it, but not, not, just, not, a, not, a, I'm not going to go into detail on the, the angle of um, belief as interference. I'm just going to mention that briefly, that belief is one way in which interference manifests. And so you can help yourself by clearing those beliefs. It will greatly accelerate your progress. So you just, as you're doing that basic process every day, become aware of what the limiting beliefs are, you know, so you're saying, oh, I'm, you know, here, I'm, I'm, I'm lovable. I'm, you know, I feel so wonderful. I'm in this, experiencing these supportive, nourishing relationships, um, yada, 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 whatever works for you. You're feeling that, imagining that. And then so the, the limiting beliefs will come up. We'll say, oh, you know, that's not, that's not realistic. I could never have that because I'm ugly, you know, or I could never have that because I'm too stupid, or I could never have that because I'm boring, or I could never have that because I'm a bad human being or whatever, you know, whatever your limiting beliefs are, you become aware of them, write them down, and then just go through a process of clearing them. Like I said, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that here today, but I will just I am just saying, um, mentioning that briefly because that can be enormously helpful. No, no question about it. But let's say you're doing all those things, and you are still finding you're still struggling. You know, whatever it is that you're wanting is still, um, still you don't feel satisfied. You know, you're still struggling in ways. Okay, well, now here's, um, you know, the the little known things that are holding you back. So we could, I, I will suggest to you that in some sense, all the polarities are connected. Um, so all of, all of them have a certain kind of their relationship, like all of them, there's a positive and a negative pole and the positives and the negatives of all the poles kind of uh, 
have a connection with one another in this sense. That if you hold on to the negative pole, to any negative pole, it will tie you down, weigh you down, and have it, you will have a tendency to have your attention sucked back into the negative pole of the thing that you're not wanting, right? So you're wanting, in the example, love or abundance or whatever, hell. And you're doing all this work every day and maybe, hopefully you're seeing some progress, some improvement, but it's still, you're not feeling, it's, it's not, you're stuck in some way. Well, here's very likely, if you're doing all the other things that I've talked about, very likely a big part of what's holding you back is that you're still stuck in some other negative polarity. And the mind is likes to compartmentalize things. And it says, oh, well, what does that, that doesn't matter. Who cares? It's like, so I want, I want abundance. What does that have to do with me being resentful that my father was, uh, you know, treated me badly? What does that have to do with me feeling, um, you know, victimized by, uh, by my, uh, you know, um, second grade teacher because they treated me unfairly. What does that have to do with whatever, you know, the mind likes, like I say, likes to compartmentalize things and say, oh, it's that, 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 that has nothing to do with it. I pay attention to that. But what I'm telling you is that there's a, a linkage there. So the, the truth is you cannot afford to hold on to those things because it's like you are We'll use a metaphor of a car. You're wanting to drive your car somewhere. If you have, so you're putting your foot on the accelerator to take you to where you want to go. Great. You're doing all these other things. Wonderful. But you're putting your other foot very heavily on the brake when you're holding on to all these other things that are also negative polarities. So again, your mind says, oh, well, what does that have to do with anything? You know, I'm just, I just want financial abundance. Um, how could that possibly be related to the resentments or grievances or blame or shame or regrets or guilt or all of these things? How could that possibly be related? Well, it is. <laughs> um, so, and you can put it to the test and find out. So here's, here's the deal. Um, and it, this will help you enormously no matter what. Um, this was the thing that uh, um, I, I, I had in, an enormous, um, like 11 years ago, I had just an enormous uh, shift in my life. And it was, I attribute it, A, entirely to divine grace, because that's always the truth. And B, to the fact that divine grace moved me to do what I'm about to tell you, which is forgive and let go of everything that hurts you. Because you cannot afford to hold on to that stuff. So make a list of anything and everything where you have any kind of bad feeling about it at all and every day go through that list and spend a, a, just a few minutes to let go forgive release and heal that stuff and you don't have to go through all of it because it's probably going to be a long list i mean for, for some of you it will be a short list because you've already done a lot of the healing but for some people it's going to be you'll be surprised it's going to be a very long list so you're not going to go through it all every day, but you could go, you could choose one, take a few minutes, right? And just say, look, whatever this is, whoever it is with, I don't want this hurt anymore. I let go, I forgive, I bless, I love, and I release it to the divine so that the divine can take care of it and bless everybody on their path of truth to their greatest good. May all beings be well. May all beings be at peace. May all beings be healthy. May all beings know love. Okay? You just 
so who, whoever it is, if you've got some stuff there, you know, with your mother, your father, your grandmother, your grandfather, your aunts, your uncles, your neighbors, your teachers, your friends, your enemies, your bosses, your employees, now in the past, distant past, whatever, just be willing to forgive and let go and bless and turn it over to the, to the divine to take care of it in the best possible way. You don't want that burden any longer. <laughs> and I promise you, if you do that sincerely, you will see huge changes, huge changes. And you might see them very quickly. You might, it, it might take a little while. It might take a few weeks before you start to see the changes. But you, if you do it consistently, sincerely, I promise you, I guarantee you will see big changes. You will experience so much healing. Your, your life will become so much lighter, so much happier, so much freer. You will be, you'll know so much more peace. And the things that you want will come to you so much more easily. Because again, there's a there's a connection there. If you're holding on to that negative stuff, no matter what domain it seems to be related to and in your mind you say it is not related at all it is it just is and um and just, so just an important point here this is not about saying that things that happened are great maybe that some things that happened are terrible maybe some people made some really bad choices maybe you made some really bad choices but everything is forgivable everything doesn't mean you need to go be best friends with those people it just means you cannot afford to hold on to that hurt anymore because it's just self-harm holding on to that so you can and must forgive let go and bless and turn it over to the divine because it is the only way otherwise you'll just continue to stay stuck again I just want to be really clear. This is not about, you don't have to be best friends with the people. You don't have to say, oh, it's great what they did. You don't have to say what you did was great. If it was terrible, that's, it was terrible. Okay. But just tell the truth. You don't want to hold on to that hurt any longer. You don't, it's like you are holding on to, you tied yourself to a heavy stone and you're sinking to the bottom of the ocean. You need to cut that tie and release yourself, liberate yourself. It's the only way. Otherwise, you're going to just continue to be suffocating. So be willing to have the courage to let it go. And I'll, I'll add this. Be willing when you turn it over to the divine. So the divine here, however you understand it, I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me, but just... Except this, to know that what I'm, what I'm talking about is supreme good, supreme love, supreme intelligence. So you're just saying, look, this knows better than I do. I, meaning as my, my habitual limited identity, the habitual limited identity, which has been defined by all of these hurts, which has been defined by all of these grievances and resentments and so forth. So I'm turning it over to that greater intelligence, accepting that it knows exactly what is best for the greatest healing for all. And I surrender to that. And I trust in that. I open to that. I allow that because it can do anything, anything, and then allow it, allow it to bring that healing because it will, if you allow it, if you ask and you allow, it will. And, but, but here, here's the thing. That willingness is so, uh, it requires so much honesty on your part. So be willing to be very honest. Again, because you want the healing, because you, you want to be done with the hurt, because you want to finally know the peace, freedom, happiness, harmony, love, and abundance that you're here to know, be, and have. I mean, it's just the truth, right? That's what you're here for. You're not here to suffer. So you can you can gift yourself that by being really deeply honest, turning it over to the divine. You know, you ask, turn it over, and then be willing to receive. It just means then, when the opportunity presents itself, 
to open to the newness. When the newness is here, the newness is like, hey, here's genuine forgiveness. Like your heart is being opened. Here's a here's a fresh insight. Here's a fresh perspective. Here's a new way to see things. Here's a new memory. If you then go to no. Well, guess what? Free will is operational always, so you get to do that, but you're only hurting yourself, right? Like you've cut you've cut the tie to the, the sinking stone, and then you grab hold of it and tie it again. Don't do that. So the divine will answer your prayer if you ask sincerely, if you are willing to release, forgive, turn it over. Absolutely, it will be granted to you, but you have to be willing to accept it. And at that moment, just notice that hurt, that old hurt that says, you should grab hold again, don't let go. <laughs> and it will tell you, you know, oh, you can't open to that because that would be wrong. You can't let go because that would be wrong. You have to punish, hold on to this forever. Don't do it. Just let go because you want to be free. Again, you're turning it over to that superior intelligence, which knows best, which knows how to bring healing to everybody. You know, you have made mistakes. I have made mistakes. Everybody has made mistakes. Don't you want the opportunity to move on, forgive, and, and experience healing from all those mistakes? Or do you want to continue to be tied to them? And of course, you want that freedom. You want to be liberated from those things. Well, you have to be willing to grant that to everybody. 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 That's why, you know, this very powerful Buddhist, Tibetan Buddhist practice, Metta Bhavana, which I, I talk about some with some regularity because it's very powerful. It's, do it. Okay. Bless, send loving kindness to all beings and start where where it's easier, right? You start with some puppy or kitten who, you know, you couldn't possibly not love unconditionally, right? You just, in your imagination, you just send loving kindness to the puppy or kitten. You just see them blessed, surrounded by light and love, having enough, being totally cared for, being well, knowing peace, okay? You just bless them in your imagination then you just progress to your somebody who you feel relatively neutral about maybe you've got some small thing beef with them or whatever but you do the same with them then you progress to somebody who maybe you've got a small grievance with not major but a little thing that's kind of niggling bothering you okay you said do that with them you just keep upping the ante until you can do that and you send loving kindness to the to the worst devils you can imagine. Why? For your own liberation, for your own happiness, because there's only one consciousness, one reality, and you are that, and you want to offer that to all beings because it's, you are all beings. Um, and But it has to be sincere. You have to be willing to actually sincerely do it. So I wouldn't recommend you start with the, you know, the worst devils in your mind. Just start with the puppy and the kitten, but have the willingness to progress to those who you have more charge with because it's great practice it will allow you to heal all of these hurts so just do this with just be like i'm saying just be willing to forgive and forgive and let go every for everybody including yourself and often yourself is the hardest one because you've got so much stuff you know you know all the things right? like you don't know all the things for everybody else. You don't know. You only know the the the, the most uh, externalized stuff for everybody else, right? You know the things that they've done and said that you know about. But for yourself, you know every nasty little thing you've ever done, said, thought, or otherwise, right? It, it, so you oftentimes we've got a whole long list of grievances against ourselves. And we say, oh, I couldn't forgive myself. I'm a terrible human being. But again, if you want the love, abundance, happiness, peace, freedom, uh, you, you don't have a choice. You must forgive yourself. You have to. It's absolutely required because otherwise 
it's like trying to drive the car with a foot on the brake, or it's like trying to take a breath of air, but you're tied to that sinking stone. So do this for yourself, liberate yourself. You will be very happy that you've done it. If you follow through on it, I promise you, you know, just do it every day. Just take a few minutes sincerely, and I promise you, you will see big changes. You will notice huge amounts of healing. You will be so much happier. And then just let me know, you know, let me know a couple of weeks from now. Just let me know how much better your life is, because it will be. But I'm asking you to let me know, because that way you can be have some accountability, right? Like, actually follow through and then follow through. Follow up with me. Let me know. Say, yeah, my life is better. I'm doing it and I'm feeling greater happiness, greater freedom, greater peace. Things are flowing in my life better. That's it. <laughs> um, yeah. So for those who are here live, I'm happy to stay on for the group coaching. For everybody who's watching this on YouTube, blessings to you. I'm going to end this recording now.